So here we are. We're going to test the taste of two sweeteners. We've got Truvia. I put it on this side of the uh, grapefruit. Then I've got another grapefruit, and I'm going to put on one side of that grapefruit, I'm going to put this Arctic sugar. And we'll talk about them and what they are. Here's one important difference here. You can see the Truvia has basically been become wet. Uh, over here, our sweetener is still dry. I've noticed this about the sweetener, that uh, it doesn't dissolve really well. And see, of course, if it doesn't dissolve well, it's not going to give us an actual true taste for this. Uh, so right off, I'd say this Arctic sugar is only going to work well uh, with things where it can be completely dissolved. And uh, you can see the Truvia is much better than this one as far as dissolving. I've noticed with this before, if you just take a pinch of it and try it, it isn't that sweet. And like I say, I think some of that's because it takes a little while to dissolve. And it's only in the dissolved state that your tongue can fully uh, taste the sweetness. So I tried to kind of mix it around with the juices that were on the uh, grapefruit. That's what I've got so far. And you can see I don't have that problem with the Truvia at all. So, uh, again, this shows, I guess you'd have to say, that Rx sugar uh, is not easily dissolved. Of course, in something like tea and things like that, you're never going to notice it because it will, will dissolve quickly. But I've tried this on cereal, too. And you get the same effect. The, the crystals that get on top of the cereal and don't get wet really aren't that sweet. And even eating them, uh, they must not have enough time to digest, to, excuse me, to dissolve in your mouth before you swallow them. So uh, we'll keep going. We've got seven minutes left on a 10-minute timer. I decided I'm going to let these set for 10 minutes. And like I say, I did interfere with this one and try to get it to dissolve better. And there's the uh, macaw. Hi, baby. Burp. So 10 minutes later, you can see that the Arctic sugar hasn't dissolved completely. You can still see on the top here uh, the, the Truvia, but uh, you can tell that it's, it's wet. You wouldn't notice it that much anyway. Now we have the taste test. So what will we have here? What I'm going to do is try to take a, a section out of this grapefruit to try that has the Rx sugar on it. Definitely can tell the sweetness. I'm going to try one on the other side of the grapefruit, just to compare it. I actually eat grapefruits more like oranges. I just peel them and eat them. I, I like uh, grapefruit. And that is sour, but it's not objectionable to me. Let's go back over the other side. A seed. I think these are, are these supposed to be seedless? I'm not sure. No, I guess not. Okay. I don't know if they have seedless grapefruits. So let's try one, a section out of the Truvia. That's much sweeter. Oh, much sweeter. Now let's look at the two products. You know, what are they made of? And that sort of thing. Now this Rx Sugar, uh, it's still in date, but it was on the sale table. It's not the cheapest thing in the world. So each packet contains uh, 10 grams or 0.35 ounces. Let's see about the Truvia, what actual weight this has, if they have it on there. 
It's not on. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, this is only two grams, so you can see that they've got 10 grams and two grams. So that's a significant difference. And, uh, you know, reading about this, uh, this type of sweetener is actually less sweet than sugar for the same amount, amount if you measure it. Okay, so you'd have to use more of this. Now, this is allulose. Okay, now it's funny to say, delicious plant-based, keto-certified, blood sugar friendly. But, you know, it doesn't actually say, well, it's got all these things in the back, you know, that it's saying it's uh, non-GMO, keto, blah, blah, uh, grain-free, vegan. The K, I believe, is kosher. Is, the, is this M for the halal type thing for Muslims? I don't know. Now, it's interesting. This is made by getting an enzyme to work on uh, some of the plant sugar to turn them into this allulose. So, uh, it's not exactly what you would call all natural because they do do this step and they use enzymes. Now, the question is whether we would encounter this type of sugar, this type of sweetener in our normal diet or not. Now, Truvia is, uh, this is, this to me is a fairly new one. Truvia is based on something that uh, has been around a long time. And that is, it's got monk fruit and erythrozole. Uh, so they, it's combining two sweeteners, this monk fruit and this uh, erythrozole. Uh, it's important to say about erythrozole, if you've got dogs, you want to make sure they don't get anywhere near this. That This actually is poison to dogs. It isn't to humans, but to dogs it is. So uh, if you have any of this, you want to keep anything with the erythrozole product. You can buy it in different things. Sometimes they mix it with stevia. Sometimes it's pure. Uh, when you eat it, purer, it has kind of a mint taste to it. So I think that's kind of why they combine it with something else, because generally you want to get that sweetness without some type of aftertaste. Now, uh, most of us are familiar with stevia, and uh, the fallacy with that is that sometimes it can leave an aftertaste. So it's best used in strongly flavored foods, and maybe uh, that will disguise this fact that it has an aftertaste. You know, and of course it's something you could just get used to, too. Now, uh, let me try another one out of this one. Uh, uh, stevia has been used for a thousand years in, you know, Latin America or, or South America, where it comes from. So that stevia, uh, not this trubia, monk fruit and urethral is uh, dramatically sweet, sweeter. Now let's try the uh, RX sugar one, uh, the al allulose. Try this again. Yeah, that's sweet too now, but again, we have this this kind of white splotch on our fruit, <laughs> which definitely doesn't look appetizing. So there you have it. We tried two, two uh, sweeteners. This one's a combo. This one's single. And so what I would say when we look at these, this doesn't dissolve super easily. So you're going to, you're probably not going to use it to sprinkle on things. Okay. It's going to be, more often dissolved in something. If I was going to use this for cereal, which I've tried, I dissolved this in the milk. Now, this this one I think is sweet enough and dissolves enough to use, uh, just like sugar. Now, uh, are these safe? Well, generally considered safe, but you know it's like people are using it now, so that we kind of won't know till later. And even stevia, which I haven't tested here, but been used for a thousand years, uh, that doesn't mean it's healthy. You know, in some of the, these cultures, people had a very short lifespan. 
So if you were dying around 30 or 40, anyway, from whatever, all those fa environmental factors, poor health, nutrition, whatever, whatever depresses the age of more primitive people sometimes, you wouldn't notice that maybe something might actually cause cancer because you didn't live till 60 or 70 for it to fully develop. So that's one of the problems with when we take something and say, oh, they've been using this for a thousand years. Stevie, we can use this. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, maybe we can't. <laughs> so it will be interesting. I know I talked to, talking about dieting with a kind of like a nurse practitioner. I went in for, you know, get checked for something. And I, you know, they have that kind of nurse come in first and check all these different things. And I asked her about it. And she said, eat regular sugar. I said, what? Yeah. She said, you know what sugar is. Sugar is pure. You know exactly what it is. And you know, the side effects, you know, which is you eat too much. You get fat, you get diabetes. We know where that goes if you use it in excess. But, you know, she was saying the, all of these artificial sweeteners, we don't know where they're going to go. So, you know, uh, that is a decision that you would have to make. But, uh, you know, usually when we're doing these things, I, I would only suggest that we do them for a short term. Let's say we've decided to diet. We want to lose, you know, 20 pounds or something, you know, doing it for a short period or wait until you lose that weight. And then you go back to regular, uh, you know, using sugar in things to a moderate amount. Uh, that, I think, would be considered to be fairly safe. Uh, because, like I say, they don't, you want to be using it long term and uh, therefore uh, less problems would arise. And uh, two, also, you can learn to eat some things without sugar. Like I say, I enjoy grapefruit just as it is. That tartness, the sourness is not objectionable to me. I've gotten used to it and I really like it. I've got some, uh, I gave up any kind of sodas or anything. So then basically you're doing water or milk. You try these different things to drink. And uh, I do like grapefruit juice. Although I bet this grapefruit juice I bought probably has some sugar in it. So there we go. Bye.